Hi, welcome to the last video in this series about gas server mode for split splitted inlet. In this video, we will be answering the question at what flow rate should we use uh, the gas server mode for? So if you are using the gas server mode, if you activate the gas server mode, if you look at here, whenever you turn on the gas server mode, the software will automatically find at 2 minutes for you over here and 20 mil per minute over here. So in the last video, I was explaining what, uh, what time you should be using over here. But in this uh, um, video, I'll be answering the question at what flow rate should be using. By default, it will be set 20 mil per minute, but uh, we, need, we need to know what's, what's the minimum and what's the maximum value we should set over here. So if you hover the mouse uh, at the field over here, it will tell you that the minimum is 15 mil per minute. You don't want to go lower than that because you want to push the uh, split pen flow uh, efficiently over there to remove any uh, like a weakest of a sample or whatever from there. So 15 mil is a minimum, but what about the maximum? Of course, you don't want to go so high otherwise, because the main idea of gas is only to save your gas. So if you go higher over here, so that's mean you're not saving that anymore, right? So there should be a number that you should be going for, for, for this, for the maximum, for the upper limit, right? So let, let me show you one example of that down, down here. Okay, so uh, if you are using the gas remote at 2 minutes and 20 mil per minute, and let's put into this scenario and the total consumption for your case in for, for, for 40 minutes would be uh, for 2 minutes at 508 and then 12 minutes at 28 over here, 20 plus 5 plus 3 and this one 500 plus 5 plus 3. Right, so the total consumption is 1,300 mil per minute. So that will, one helium channel will last 115 hours. But if you turn on a gas remote uh, at two minutes, but the flow rate is only 15 mil per minute, you will be able to uh, use this helium cylinder for 121 hours. That's slightly longer, right? So you will see that uh, different uh, flow rate over here will save you more, okay? So that's a minimum. You, you can't go lower than 15. The software will not allow you to do that. Uh, the reason because, again, you want to push this part over here efficiently. You don't want to have so low over here. Otherwise, some other sample may not be able to carry it on the way to split and trap over here. And you may have like some kind of blocking along the line, something like this over here. So that's why the software will not allow you to go lower than that, lower than 15 when you hover the mouse over here. There you go, so 15 mil per minute, okay. But what about the upper limit? The upper limit is probably, most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, 20 mil per minute should be working well for you, or even 15 mil per minute should be working well for you. But one scenario I want you to keep in mind when it comes to the upper limit is, actually I explained this before, so that's why I, uh, I want to share with you guys about this one. So what, uh, let's put in the scenario, scenario that you want to run a constant flow, uh, let's say your method, you have a constant flow rate for the column, but in the oven over here, you ramp up very, very quickly. Let's say 30 or the ramp rate at 30 or even 35 or 40 mil for 40 degrees per minute. So that means you are ramping super, super fast, right? And as you know, if you are ramping the, 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 the temperature of the oven super fast like that, the inlet pressure will have to increase to catch up. With to compensate for the pressure for, for, for the flow rate because you define constant flow rate for your column. So that means the inlet pressure will have to increase fast enough to maintain the constant flow rate over here, right? And uh, if you, uh, let me show you this one. So the, the inlet pressure which is inside here that is designed actually by the total flow rate that you that, that you're sending in over here and again a, com, uh, a, re, uh, a reminder that the total flow rate is a combination of split flow plus the septum flow plus the column flow so the septum and the uh, column flow usually you keep them constant in this case you keep at uh, 20 mil per minute over here and 3 mil per minute over here but this one is something you are on outer. Whether you turn on a gas remote or not, if you turn on a gas remote, this one will become the gas saver flow. If you don't turn on a gas remote, this will be the split flow, right? So what if uh, the scenario is that you uh, increase the oven so fast that the pressure increments is not fast enough? Sometimes you see something like uh, the set point is always higher than the actual point. Then after a few times, you will hear some beep, 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 beep from the EC. After a few seconds or a few minutes, the EC will shut down the, the, the pressure because it's, the EC detects that 
uh, there's not enough pressure to maintain the inlet pressure over there. So it could detect something like a leak or something like that. But in fact, it's not, it's not a leak. But the EC could detect something like a leak. So it could shut down the EC uh, for you. So uh, if you are in this scenario, one of the way that you want you, you can do is you can just simply go back to the the inlet for here and increase the flow rate of the gas saver over here. Of course, you don't want to turn it off because you want to save gas again, but you don't want uh, to to shut down your EC either, right? So instead of 20, you might do a few experiments to try. Let's say you can go like uh, 30, 40, 50, something like that to try. So one of the EC that I experienced with this one, I have to increase the gas saver flow to, if I remember correctly, it was 50 mil per minute, you know, for me to keep the, the pressure uh, sustainable during the run. Otherwise, it will, some, once in a while, it just like shut down the EC because the pressure was not enough to uh, catch up with the open uh, ramping. So that's one case that you want to uh, keep in mind in case you want to uh, set up the gas and work correctly. All right, so uh, that is... This is the last video in this series about gas remote and I hope over the last four videos you have learned uh, a lot about gas remote, how to use them correctly from now on and with that in mind you'll be able to save a lot of gases for your company, for your lab and especially helium when it comes to uh, the, the running out of uh, helium and you know the more expensive helium we will be getting uh, over in the future. Right. So I hope you enjoyed this series and let me know in the comment section if you have any quest uh, if you have any question about this and uh, thank you very much for your watching. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you for your uh, support. I see you in my next video. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.